Archaeologists and historians can usually provide reasonable explanations for artifacts from the distant past that they discover in the course of their work. However, some items have no ready-made explanation, and their purpose remains a mystery lost to time. This video showcases such items from long ago and far away, all of which have left experts with more questions than answers. The Sabo Sword, also known as the Thermoth Sword, is a Viking sword that was found in a barrow at Sabo Vikoiri in Norway's Sogn region in 1825. It's unique in that it displays remnants of a metal thread at the broadsides of its upper hilt. The blade is in a delicate condition, and the inscription on it is poorly preserved. But if the interpretation favored by experts is correct, it would be a one-of-a-kind example of a Viking-era sword with a runic blade inscription. The sword features an inscription realized in iron inlay along the center of the blade, close to the hilt. George Stevens, an English archaeologist and philologist who specialized in the runic inscriptions of Scandinavia, identified the sword's inscription as a runic inscription incorporating a swastika symbol. In his book, Handbook of the Old Northern Runic Monuments of Scandinavia and England, Stevens included a drawing of the sword and its inscription comprising five runes, or rune-like letters, with a swastika symbol in the middle. Stevens interpreted the swastika as a symbol of Thor, and interpreted the meeting as owned by me, Thermoth. A metal detectorist has discovered an ancient gold penannular ring in North Norfolk that was made over 3,000 years ago. This precious find took place in September 2022, but wasn't reported until March 2023. The half-inch ring is gold-plated over a metal core and features, in the words of experts, an amazing amount of worksmanship. The ring's exact purpose is unknown, as it's not a finger ring, but it's unclear whether it was created to decorate an ear or nose, and if so, how it was attached. About 12 gold penannular rings have been found in the country since the Portable Antiquities Scheme was set up in 1997. Helen Geek, a local finds liaison officer, said that people who could work with metal during the Bronze Age were seen as almost wizards, and that they were incredibly mysterious. She added that the Bronze Age was the era that produced the first people in the UK to work with metal, and that they used fire to change its nature. The Norfolk Coroner's Court has launched an inquest into the find, and Norwich Castle Museum hopes to acquire it in time. The Wanli Emperor of the Ming Dynasty possessed an enormous world map that was unlike anything in Europe. The map, which was mounted on a six-panel folding screen, contained over 850 place names, latitude and longitude lines, and minutely scripted legends for each kingdom, island, and continent. Created by an Italian Jesuit missionary and Chinese geographer, the map depicted the world as 20 times more expansive than the emperor had ever imagined, and it had the title Comprehensive Chart of the Myriad Lands Upon the Foundation of the Earth. However, it's suspected that the map was altered at some point in history. One key feature of the map, the legend that reads, between the 15th and 42nd parallels, was erased and replaced with ocean patterns. It is unclear whether this was done recently or long ago, but it is clear that the alteration provides evidence that China's current claim to the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea is not indisputable. The original map clearly documents that in 1608, Ming sovereignty extended only as far south as the Paracel Islands, which are hundreds of miles from the Spratleys. The alteration may be an attempt to support China's modern fiction of historical primacy in the South China Sea. A historic object associated with the Catholic Church has been found buried in the ground in the Lubeczow Forest District of Poland in March 2023. The object is a monstrance, which is used for the exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Researchers from the Kreschau Museum in Lubeczow are trying to determine its history and, hopefully, discover the temple it was once part of. The origin of the monstrance remains a mystery, and the researchers have appealed for help in determining the fate of the find. The unusual artifact was discovered by Claudius Kotulok, who was conducting a planned search for ancient monuments in the area 
in cooperation with the Podkarpaki Voivodeship Conservator of Monuments. The monstrance was broken into three parts and hidden on purpose, but once it was discovered, local authorities agreed that a full excavation of the artifact would be appropriate. That process revealed the monstrance to be made of gilded and silvered brass. Preliminary examination indicates that the artifact comes from the 19th century, which is relatively recent history. Why would something so recent be buried? And where did it come from? Archaeologists have uncovered two 1,400-year-old murals of two-faced men in a ceremonial hall belonging to the Mochi culture in Peru. The murals are adorned with rich details, including one depicting a man holding a goblet that hummingbirds are seen drinking from, potentially alluding to sacrifice and what experts somewhat enigmatically referred to as the cosmic realms that the Mochi believed in. The artists may have been experimenting with how to show movement and capture two narrative moments simultaneously. The murals were created between the years 550 and 800, when the Mochi civilization flourished in coastal areas of Peru. The Mochi built temples, engaged in human sacrifice, and created fine works of art, including a famous pair of ceramic goblets shaped like human heads. The two-faced men may represent deities, but this is uncertain, as they appear entirely human except for the fact that each has two faces. The location of the discovery, which happened in March 2023, is Panamarca, an architectural complex located in Peru's lower Nipeña Valley. Archaeologists have been studying it for over 60 years, but despite those decades of study, much of the site remains unexcavated. The possible discovery of a bronze Buddha statue in northwestern Australia could provide evidence of early Chinese exploration and settlement of the region, according to two filmmakers who claim to have unearthed the object. Leon Deschamps and Shane Thompson discovered the small, heavy statue while using metal detectors to search for objects left by French explorers in the early 1800s. The filmmakers believed the statue could date back to the Ming Dynasty which lasted from 1368 to 1644, and provide evidence of Chinese exploration of Australia more than 600 years ago, although this claim is hotly debated by experts. Some scholars have suggested that the statue could have been brought to Australia by Chinese pearlers in the late 1800s or early 1900s. The discovery of the Bronze Buddha could also provide new insights into the Ming-era treasure fleets, which explored the world for minerals and other resources. According to former Chinese President Hu Jintao, these expeditions traveled to Australia in the early 15th century, more than three centuries before Captain Cook arrived in the region. Despite being a controversial topic, proponents of the theory have long sought a smoking gun to prove the Chinese visited Australia centuries before European explorers. Maybe this is it. A Apopka in Florida, USA is a small city in Orange County that generally doesn't get much attention from archaeologists. That changed dramatically in 2005, when workers dug up a broken water pipe in the city's Highland Manor. To their great surprise, they found three sculptures of topless women wearing headdresses and jewelry and carrying earthen pots. The sculptures are large and heavy, each weighing several hundred pounds. A large stone head was found close to the three sculptures. One thing was immediately clear. The statues are not Floridian or even American in origin. The statues were taken to the city's museum, which moved them into its backyard because it didn't know what else to do with them. A chance visit from Alyssa Payton from the Harn Museum of Art at the University of Florida in 2015 changed that. She immediately noticed that the sculptures were made of volcanic rock and probably came to America from East Java. She also believes them to be more than 1,000 years old. The Apopka City Museum was glad of the help and donated the statues to the Harn Museum so they could be better displayed. The question of how they got to America in the first place remains unanswered. Unfortunately for fans of comic books, the Batman Museum in southeastern Anatolia, Turkey isn't what it sounds like. There's no Dark Knight memorabilia here. However, it's still worth a visit if you're in the area, not least because it contains the oldest board game in the world. 
Staff at the museum call the game Dogs and Pigs, but that's just a nickname based on what some of the pieces look like. We have no idea what the people who played the game called it, and even less idea about how it might have been played. What we do know, though, is that the handcrafted pieces on this beautiful board were created 5,000 years ago. That makes the game older than Go, which was played in China thousands of years ago, and Senet, which is an Egyptian board game of a similar age. The board and pieces were found in an archaeological site in the southeastern Turkish province of Sirt. It's the only dogs and pigs board that's ever been found, so the game may not have been widespread. The various pieces make it look like the game would be fun to play, but without the rules, we're a little bit stuck. To say that the Kaskajal block is a bone of contention for archaeologists and scientists would be putting things mildly. To its supporters, it's evidence that the Olmec civilization devised the first form of writing in the Americas. To its detractors, it's a more modern forgery, and there's little chance that the two sides will ever agree. The circumstances of its discovery don't help. Rather than being dug up by archaeologists, it was found in a pile of debris in Veracruz, Mexico, by road builders in 1990. The clay figurines and ceramics found around it have been dated to around 1000 BCE, and so it's assumed that the Cascajal block, with its complex system of glyphs, is from the same historical era. If so, that would predate the written language of the Zapotec by around 400 years. Some of the symbols appear to represent animals and birds, but others are abstract and impossible to decode. The arrangement of the symbols in haphazard rows is inconsistent with other Mesoamerican systems of writing, so it may be that each symbol is an independent piece of information. The repetition of certain symbols, though, might indicate a repeated letter or word. Maybe one day, we'll decode it. The Aldrobrandini Taz, also known as the Silver Caesars, aren't anywhere near as old as some of the mysteries we've looked at during this video, but they're every bit as enigmatic. The 12 silver gilt branding cups aren't just incredible examples of Renaissance metalwork, they're the most accomplished feat of 16th century goldsmith work in the world. Each of the pieces consists of a bowl, a step, and in the center of the bowl, a figurine of one of the Roman emperors described in the book The Twelve Caesars by the ancient Roman writer Suetonius. Inside each bowl are a further four reliefs in which important scenes from the lives of those rulers are depicted. There's a very slight difference in styles between some of the pieces, which implies the work may have been started by one artist and continued by another. The reason they're so mysterious is that we don't know who made them. For such incredible work, we'd expect a historical record, or at least an artist's signature on the work, but there's nothing and little written history to go on. They first appear in the inventory of Cardinal Pietro Aldor Brandini in 1603, hence the collection's name, but he wasn't the artist, and they're likely to be much older than that. Archaeologists are used to finding animal-shaped pots and vases inside ancient Chinese tombs, but this swan-shaped pot came with a riddle that experts are yet to get to the bottom of. The previously undisturbed pot contains a 2,000-year-old liquid, and we currently have no idea what the fluid is. The discovery arrived almost by accident. It came when construction workers in San Mekshia in the Henan province came across a previously unknown grave and called in the experts to take a closer look. Along with the swan pot, they also found a bronze helmet, an iron sword, and a jade ceremonial sword, so this was likely the final resting place of a soldier or warrior. The pot, though, is somewhat incongruous with the rest of the discoveries. It's the only bronze pot ever found in this part of China, and so that, coupled with the fact that it contains an unidentifiable liquid, has got archaeologists very excited. The fluid, of which there was around 3,000 milliliters, has been described as yellowish-brown and containing impurities. It could be anything from ancient wine to the fabled and long-sought-after Chinese elixir of life. In May 2020, Will Red was fishing with a magnet in a river in Coventry, England, hoping to find valuable antiquities or curiosities. He got more than he bargained for. 
Will came across a whole 60 strange cubes covered in complicated Sanskrit numerical inscriptions. He thought the tiny cubes were tiles at first, but the more of them came out of the water, the less confident he felt about his initial conclusion. Unable to find a reasonable explanation for his discovery, Will turned to the internet for help. It's since been suggested to him that they're connected to an ancient Hindu prayer ritual that involves throwing the cubes into running water in the hope of receiving a blessing in return. If the information he's been given is correct, they're known as Jyotish tokens. The numerical inscriptions apparently correspond to encoded prayers, which, when performed together, summon the protection of a deity known as Rahu. While the explanation sounds fairly convincing, there's a lack of supporting evidence to confirm the idea. So the question of what Will's cubes really are, or where they came from, remains unsolved. We've rolled out the red carpet for you at Cine Mysteria, where you'll be gripped by the highs and lows of Hollywood legends. We dig deep into movie mysteries, unveiling the secret subtexts in epic films and the failures that made franchises flop. It's a terrific tour of silver screen success and cinematic catastrophes. Subscribe to Cinemysteria, where Hollywood's hidden stories come to light. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.